just been um, having a look through the catalogue. Gee, have you seen it yet? There's some really great products in here. Um, it's really nice. And today we're going to play with something that's in the catalogue. Now this, um, what we're going to play with, let me just pull it up. And I'm going to actually first off flip down our camera so you can actually see what I'm seeing. So bear with me one second. Now also please jump on, say hello so I know you're here. You are here let me know if the sound and everything is okay and um yeah but anyway this is the new annual catalog and there is i can open it now and show you what's inside and there is just so much and i think every time i look in this catalog i am finding something new and um yeah it's just it's beautiful and I think there's going to be a lot of casing going on because I think some of the ideas that they've given us for cards in here is fantastic as well. Hi, Glenda. Can you hear me okay? Can you see everything okay? Just give me a thumbs up or something so I know. So I'm streaming today actually to my two of my Facebook pages to um, uh, keep on stamping with Michelle and to my regular Facebook page and as well as to YouTube. So uh, jump on, let me know where you're from. Please make sure you give um, Stream Yards permission to put your name up there so I know who's speaking to me. But uh, if you don't, that's fine as well. Just please say hi and let me know where you're from. So I hope you've all got a copy of the catalogue. If you haven't got a copy of this catalogue, then let me know. And if you're here in Australia, I can get one out to you. Yeah, there is some really great stuff in there. And I, I tell you, I find new ideas every time I look. But today we're going to have a play with this particular stamp set. Now, we've had this stamp set for a little while because it was one that they released early so we could have a play with. But this is the first time I've actually had a chance to have a go at this. So for the last hour or so, I have been playing around, making a lot of a mess so, as usual, my desk is a real mess. So, let me get rid of this catalog. So, we're playing with Waves of Inspiration Bundle, and it comes with stamps and dice, but we're not going to be playing with the, well, only with a couple of the dice today. And we're going to have uh, a try at uh, recreating um, this card that I've made this morning. So, um, yeah, just playing around with watercolour paper and our inks and different ways that we could colour in. I'll just see if I can find. These are some of my play pieces today. So you can see that I've sort of, yeah, been having a lot of fun and making probably a little bit of a mess. So, this is the one I've ended up being happy with, but I've even decided to change it again from this one, or we're going to give it a try. So we're going to be fingers crossed and hope for this works. So to make this card, what we need is, I'm going to pop that to one side so I don't get anything on it. We need your the Fluid 100 watercolour paper. Okay, this comes in a pack of, how many sheets are in here? Oh, God. does it tell me here 10 sheets it comes in a pack um normally i would actually cut my sheets down to half but today i'm going to play with a whole sheet um we will be doing a lot of trimming so it is a bit of wastage on this but i just sort of felt that it just gave me more scope for my water to flow and to make a bigger mess basically so what we're going to do is we're going to use our stamparatus and we're going to stamp this wave image using our um, Versamark and we're going to emboss it in white. So I've got a piece of here of my Fluid 100 watercolour paper and I'm just going to pop it up into the corner there. Now because this is a red rubber stamp let me just move this across so you can see i'll put a block underneath there um we don't need to have that extra piece of foam in there so i've just got a piece of red paper in there just to protect my surface and i'm going to pop that up there just to hold everything down so with my versa mark i'm going to ink this up now with watercolor paper 
you do need to ink up your Versamark really well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stamp this twice. So I'm going to stamp it once now. I've just got my tool here to give a bit of pressure. And remember, I've made this myself using one of our blocks. I think it's a D-sized block, yes. And then a piece of um, felt that you can put underneath your furniture that I just picked up from the reject shop here in Australia. And then I've also glued a piece of um, felt on top. My felt I've put on here is wool felt. You just need to use an acrylic felt. You don't need to go to the expense of a wool felt. The reason why I've got the two layers of felt is that the felt that you put um, under your furniture is a lot harsher and I just felt that it would actually scratch the surface of my plate whereas the um, softer acrylic felt or wool felt is a lot gentler on your plate and that just helps you to get even pressure all over and I know that as I'm getting a little bit older my fingers are getting a little bit sore so um, whoops don't want to throw that um, I just feel that that's a lot easier for me. So I'm just going to stamp this up a second time. And because I've got that magnet there, it's holding that all nice in place for me. Give that a good press down for a second time just to make sure that that Versamark ink is well and truly adhered to our watercolour paper. Because our watercolour paper is textured. So you need to spend a little bit more time making sure that um, you're getting really good coverage. So once I've done that, I'm going to pop that out of there. So that's the beauty of using a Stamparatus is the fact that you can um, come back and re-stamp in exactly the same place as before. Now I'm going to be fairly generous here. I've got my white embossing powder and I want to get really good coverage. So I'm being very generous popping that on there. And we're just going to tip that off onto my scrap paper here. Make sure I've got enough powder on all that stamp surface. Don't worry, this is not going to get wasted. Just flick off that excess. And because I'm doing this on a smaller piece of scrap paper, I can lift this up and pour this back into my container. Make sure you put your lids on them because once you start the heat guns, you will have um, bossing powder from one end of your work area to the next. So now I've got that. Now I'm going to make a little bit of noise here. I'm sorry, but we're going to heat this embossing powder up. And if you've never seen embossing powder working before, when you put your embossing powder onto your um, Versamark, your Versamark acts like a, a glue and adhesive and it holds that embossing powder in place. Um, so that's why you sort of, you've got areas that will have the embossing powder and areas that don't. But when you put it on there, it is a matte. When you heat it and you melt it and to know that it's all done, it will go from a matte to a shiny surface and you'll see it turn just like magic. So let me keep going with this. It does take a little while. And you want to keep your heat gun moving so you're not burning your surface because these heat guns do put out a lot of heat. And you can, if you want, just heat the back of it as well. So I know at the moment you can't really see what I'm doing here. Um, it doesn't really, because I'm basically doing white on white, even though my uh, watercolour paper is more of an off-white than a white. But it is just starting now to turn and to go from that matte white to a shiny white. Now I want to make sure I go over my whole surface well and truly to make sure I'm not leaving any areas where the powder hasn't melted. little bit down there and when you put it in the light you can actually see that all change 
And of course, if you were doing this on a, a coloured background, then you'd actually see that change a lot better. But I don't know whether you can actually see that, but I've now got, no, I don't think you can, but I've now got quite a nice shiny surface of that wave on there. Now, this is the fun part. This is where I make a lot of mess. Hi, Joan. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. So you'll need to have a piece of, um, oh, what would you call this stuff? I do have some new ones because this is what I've had for years. Um, this is a non-sticky heat-resistant mat, which is a great mat for protecting your surface if you're doing a lot of work with watercolour. Um, it does stain, so, you know, hence this is all different colours, but it just helps to keep my work surface clean. And as you would know by now, I work in a very small, messy area, so um, this is just going to help me just to protect this paper underneath. So, unfortunately, Stamping Up don't sell it, but you probably ought to pick it up at most craft stores. So, we're going to play with our, with a big block. Now, when I did my card earlier, this one here, what I did was I um, sprayed my watercolour paper all down with water and then I inked up my block. I found that that was a lot easier than some of these other methods that I tried. Um, where are my plays from before? So this one here, I used a watercolour brush and tried to brush the colour on, but I wanted the colour to um, move around a bit. I did play with some other colours. That's why it's got a slight greenish tinge because I was putting a yellow in there as well. This one here, I just sprayed it down and then put water, or put, sprayed it all down with water, then put my ink on it and just see what happens when it runs. It looks good. I've not got the depth of colour I wanted, but I didn't get the all over colour I wanted. Every time you do this, you're going to get a completely different look. So with this card here, I actually just inked up my block. So I inked up my light colour and stamped it down. Um, I had a lot of water on there, so it flowed a bit and then stamped my dark colour on the bottom. But I don't know whether you can actually see, but on this card, I've actually got a line across here. And that's the line from the block. So this time I thought what we're going to do is we're going to try it with a bigger block. This is not a new technique. This is an old technique. So what we're going to do, first off, we're going to take everything out of the road that we don't want to get wet. Now we're going to, you can use these little spritzer bottles that Stamping Up sell, um, put water in it and spray. I've just got a bigger one here. Not much bigger, but just a bigger one because I was having a, I've got to clean that one, I think. I think at some stage I've had alcohol in it. So um, this one's only got water in it and I just want to spray all of that down so it's nice and wet. You want your water to be sort of almost flowing on your paper. Not too badly. It's going to um, beat up where you've got your embossing happening because we're doing like an emboss resist technique. But we're going to take our block and the colours that I'm using are two of the new ink colours. We've got Tahitian Tide. So I'm going to take this first and I'm going to ink up. Let me move this across. I'm going to ink that up across there like that. And I'm putting my light colour on first because I, I'm going to put my dark colour on next. So the other colour I'm using is one of the other new ink colours, which is Starry Sky. I'm loving these two colours at the moment. Mind you, my favourite colours change weekly, daily. So, and I'm going to pop that across the bottom. As you can see, that is a lot stronger colour. doesn't matter if it um, overlaps a little bit. Let me just bring this back down in. I'm also going to give my block here a little bit of a spray because I want those colours. I want to get rid of that line. I want those colours to blend. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me just... Uh, I have a little bit of a drink there. So I want those colours just to blend a little bit, just so then we um, don't have that sharp line. So this is the tricky part with the big block. Now we're going to go across and we're going to stamp that right there. Now this is going to be interesting to see how this goes because I 
haven't tried this one. I did my other one a little bit differently. So let's, you can see there's plenty of water in there. You can hold that down to that water is saturated into there a little bit. I want the depth of colour at the top. Now, another good thing to have, and I didn't grab it out, is make sure you have plenty of paper towels. Because you will end up with a mess and you don't want to have that all over your clothes. Now, I'm actually really happy with the way that's turned out. Let me just flatten that out a little bit. So I'm just standing that up just to get that colour. So I've got nice depth of colour here at the top, which is what I wanted. I've got nice depth of colour here with my wave because I really want that to look like a bit like an ocean. So I think I am actually really pleased with the way that turned out. I'm not the greatest person with watercolour. Um, we'll do the watercolour washes. I sort of tend to play and use up a lot of stuff trying to work out something that's going to work for me easily and simply and this is such a a simple way to do this that um anyone can do it but just remember you are going to get a slightly different effect every time you do the more water you have on it the more runoff you're going to have but the more blending you're going to get as well um if you have don't have as much water you won't get that nice blending and you'll get a little bit of blotchiness from your block so i think i've got rid of all of that water around me i'm just going to grab the heat gun and just dry this off if you let it dry naturally the colors are going to stay nice and bright but they can dull a little bit when you're using your heat gun but it will make it nice and quick for today so we're just going to give this a good dry off Dry the back as well. Doesn't take too long to dry. Now that's not completely dry as yet, but what I do want to do, <coughs> oh, excuse me, is maybe add a few water splatters if I can. So let's see how we go. So I've just squirted some water in my hand and I'm just going to flick my fingers on top of that because I just want just a little bit of water splatters. And what happens when you put a water splatter on? It basically will push the um, the ink away. So you can see here it's starting to push some of the, the ink away and you'll get sort of like whiter areas. I want to put a little bit more up the top there. So don't want to get too carried away, Michelle. But anyway, let's see that how that goes. If you put a little bit too much water on there, all you need to do is get some paper towel and do a little bit of blotting. Just make sure you're not going from dark to light. Otherwise, you will transfer some of that dark colour, which is what I've been up to that lighter area. And you can see there now, I don't know whether you can see it, but we've got some splotches here. So I'm going to go over that again with the heat gun and just dry all that off. And that now feels definitely dry enough for us to work with. So let me remove those stamp pads out of the road. We don't need that anymore. So we can pop that away somewhere just to clean it off later. It's gone down the back of the cupboard, but that's okay. I'll find that in a little while. And we're going to trim this down to size. So I'm going to start by trimming off the bottom, the bit at the bottom. So let me just move... All of this out of the road. 
and I'm just going to line up the bottom edge of that water there to my trimmer so I'm lining it up with that channel that my blade is going to go through and I'm going to just cut that bottom edge off there for so that's going to give me a nice straight line to work from so I'm going to cut this down to 13 and a half by 9 so I need also to trim this because I've got a line there so I want to line up this line here again with that channel and we're going to get rid of that piece so I said we want it to be 13 not 13 by 9 13 it's 13 by eight and a half. So we want eight and a half this way. So that's eight and a half. Let me just check. Yes. Now don't get rid of all these little pieces here. These little pieces come in handy. You can, you know, cut out all sorts of things, die cut bits and pieces out of it, um, die cut um, sentiment pieces out of it. There's all sorts of things you can do there. And the other measurement was 13, so we need to go 13 here. And that's going to trim it back down to there. So there's our little panel there. So that's like a robot, um, reverse, um, a resist way, because we've stamped the um, verse mark and um, put the... Um, Oh, golly, my words, the embossing powder on there. My words are getting a bit lost. So we've sort of done a resist here. So we're keeping the white background underneath. You could do exactly the same thing with using your clear powder, but I really wanted that really nice crispness of the white because, you know, your waves as it hit the, um, the shore and that has a lot of that foam and that whiteness in it. So that's what I wanted to capture there. So now we've done that, we need to do a little bit more stamping. So... I need to find, here we go, I popped everything over here. So I've got a scrap piece there on my basic white and I'm taking now this stamp here, which is the, um, I was going to say penguin, but it's not a penguin. Oh, come on, guys, help me out. Um, it's just really, I have just gotten so forgetful today. A pelican starts with P, a pelican sitting on some logs there. So we're going to stamp him and we're going to stamp him in smoky slate. Oh, I don't know what's happening with my brain today. I wasn't feeling good last night. Maybe it's just taken a bit out of me as well. That's okay. As long as I know what I'm talking about. Hi, Shelley. How are you? So we're going to stamp our pelican just here in our smoky slate. And we're also going to cut, oh, I can't get that lid. There we go. We're also going to cut. We're also going to stamp our sentiment. And I'm just using a happy birthday sentiment. And we're going to cut this out also with a die. So I'm going to stamp him just possibly, whoops, just wondering, is that going to be wide enough? Just checked. We'll just, I might just do it across there. Okay. So I'm going to stamp that, give myself plenty of room either side and stamp that there. And that's right, just put my finger straight into the ink. Oh, it's one of those days. I hope you're all having a better day than I am. Okay, so let's bring in our mini cut and emboss machine because that's all we're going to need for this one. And I'm going to get rid of all of that out of my road. need our plates there so I hope you're all having beautiful weather it was supposed to rain here yesterday but it didn't rain and it's a gorgeous day outside today not that I've really been out but 
I'll probably will go and sit out in the sun for a little while because I know my husband will say to me soon, go and get some rays. And before it gets too cold down here in the highlands, it would be nice to get a little bit of warmth. So I'm going to hold that, hold it nice and firmly on the top of your machine because this machine is fairly light. Okay, so we've done that and hopefully there's our pelican cut beautifully. Yes, there is. So there's our pelican and then we're going to cut our sentiment. Now we probably could have done this both together but I want to line that up. And I might, that's no, there was a dirty mark there, but no, that was just a bit of fluff, so it's come off. So line that up so that's nice and in line. Now who's looking forward to getting those magnetic mats? I haven't ordered mine as yet, and I know the one for this little machine is not quite available here for us as yet but oh boy i can't wait to get it i think they're going to be a fantastic tool to have um, to keep everything all lined up on these plates Let's throw that over there Okay, so we've got our ocean view there. We've got our pelican, we've got our sentiment. Now we need a mat and we need our card base. So my card base I've cut from a piece of thick um, basic white cardstock and I've scored it. So I've cut this at... Um, 14.9 centimetres by the 21 centimetres and scored it at 10 and a half. So I'm just going to fold that, making sure I line up my edges. Because you don't always want 100% guaranteed it has scored in the exact right position for you. And then I'm just going to use my bone folder just to give that a nice sharp crisp fold there. So there's our card front. I tend to leave mine on the inside blank um, unless I'm using a dark coloured card base. So I'm quite happy for that to stay blank on the inside. So I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to bring in this piece here and we're going to adhere our watercolour piece to our starry sky um, cardstock, which is my mat. And my mat is measuring half a centimetre larger, so we cut our watercolour cardstock at eight and a half by 13. So I've cut the mat at nine by 13. Just want it a little bit bigger. And then by using the multi-purpose glue, you can actually slip that around um, until you get that right in that position. I'm just gonna flip that over and give that a really good rub because watercolour paper is a little bit harder um sometimes to glue down and plus it slightly curved because i used the heat gun on it so happy with that pop the lid on my glue and now now with this card what i did here i've sort of got to this point and glued this onto my card base and thought oh i didn't wrap any of the twine that i wanted to use around it so i ended up just um, threading the twine through the holes on my um, uh, on my sentiment. So this time I'm going to do this one the way I originally wanted to do it. So I'm going to wrap this around. So I've got my thread here. I'm going to pop a little bit of seal. I've got, what drum have I got here? I've just got the regular seal plus here and i'm going to pop a little bit of that there just on one side and that's just going to be able to hold that for me in place because i want to wrap that around but what i'm going to do is i'm not going to actually attach that just yet i want to go three times and cut a bit off 
So I haven't stuck it down as yet. My finger is underneath there, just holding it up so it doesn't stick. Just that little bit of thread there. Because what I want to do, let's see if we can do this. I still want that look of it going through. So we're just going to pop that through there and then through there. Now bring this around again and repeat. Loosen it off a little bit. So we're just going to pop that down and up. Don't worry about where that's going to be positioned right at the moment because we are going to, we'll be able to move it around. So again, I want to go down through there. Back up through that and then Should be able to then pull that. I'm going to pull it too tight, but we just want to do want to pull this a little bit tighter across, making sure that it's going over that side. I want to bring that down just a little bit. I think once you're happy with that's positioned there, you can add a little bit more of the seal on the back and press that down. So if you wanted to, you could spread these out a little bit. Or you can bunch them up together and you can move this across wherever you want that position. But I want that positioned just about there and that will hold. So that's just a slightly different look to that one. With this one here, what I did to do that one is I grabbed one of the plates for my um, cut and emboss machine and I actually left a tail and just wrapped that loosely around three times or coming, you know, sort of twice fully and coming back on the third time and then cut it and basically pulled that off like that, keeping those all together and then threaded it through those two holes. So I threaded this one from the back up and then this side from the back up and threaded it through there. Um, so this was, plate was just perfectly in the width that I wanted that to go. I didn't want it to go any further. But that was only just because I forgot to put the, um, the twine on. So um, that's just another way of using that. So we're now we're going to get some dimensionals. And you will need some large ones and a small one here. So I'm just going to use... Oh, and by the way, there's three dimensionals on that. You do have to push them down quite firmly because you've got all that bulk underneath. Well, that's the only problem with doing it that way. You've got all this bulk of um, of the threads going backwards and forwards. So that's why you don't want to wrap it around your, um, your Perspex piece too many times um, because first off I started doing it about four times, but it just made it too thick. Okay, so I'm just putting a mini dimensional at the top of that peng penguin, pelican's head. I'll get it right before the end of today. And then we're going to adhere our pelican just there over the top of that. Just giving it a little bit of a firm press. Now, the only problem is there, they're going over that, so I might just, no, it's just going to have to go over it. That's fine. Just give that a good firm press there, just so, because it's going over those three pieces of twine. 
so it's sort of wanting not to really sit real well so if you just give it that little bit of a firm press that'll go on there and then I'm just going to pop that over there I'm just going to put some actually this time I think we might put some dimensionals on here I haven't for some reason I sort of go through times where I put dimensionals on the back and sometimes I just glue it straight down um, and lately I've just been doing a lot of gluing straight down rather than giving it a bit of height so we're just going to put, add a few more dimensionals on there don't need to add too many you know it's um because that's got because you've got the watercolor paper there you've got a fair amount of strength it's not actually going to sink in the middle just take your backings off And we don't have the, the ability here to slip this around into the place that you want. So you want to make sure that you do have this positioned pretty much where you want it before you press down. I think that looks good. <coughs> Excuse me. And there you are. So that one there still wants to sit up a little bit. I might have to put another little mini dimensional in there somewhere but anyway there's my cards as I said every time you do this you will get a very different effect um, this one here as I said it's got the line going across it because I used the narrower block um, but it didn't I didn't get as much of the blue through here and in this one here my blue is actually more intense um, particularly right here behind my pelican which is really what I was trying to get so um maybe doing it with the big block is the way to go but i'm sure if i try to do this again i will get something completely different remember if you make pieces like this don't throw them away you can cut them out you can cut all sorts of things out of there you know whether it be flowers so it's never um it's never wasted you could still even make a card out of that um but that was just one another way of doing it as i said just you know i did exactly the same thing stamping and embossing but then i wet it and i then added ink directly to this with a water painter but just didn't quite get the all over flow that i wanted so i hope you're happy with that or you like that i'd love to see if you give it a go um and uh, let me know what you think and uh, post your cards onto my page um, under the comments because in the next few days I will post this card up on my Facebook pages so um, you can follow it if you have missed my live you can always go back to YouTube because it will be on there as well so I'm going to say bye for now because I've got to clean up not only my desk but my workroom before I get back into my sewing again so uh, take care have a lovely day and um, Glenda, Joan and Shelley, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm really pleased that uh, you jumped on and uh, said hello. It's fantastic catching up with everybody this way. So have a lovely day. Take care. And um, we'll see you next Friday at 1 o'clock. Bye for now.